I'm Jenny Fish. And I'm Sarah Delaney. And we're with One Big Happy Yarn Company. Hi. So welcome to our Missouri Star Knit Blanket Make Along. Make Along. Because I'm going to be doing a knit version. And I'll be doing the crochet version. So in this episode, we're going to start off with the knit version. And I'm going to walk everyone through. Sarah's going to help me out. And we are going to show you how to make this gorgeous Missouri Star Knit Blanket. Yeah. The products that we're using, the amazing yarn, is the Barocco Vintage. I love this yarn. It's so... I'm nice. not going to use your, your least favorite word. Squishy. Ah, it's fluffy. It is fluffy. I like fluffy. But no, it is, it's, it's a workhorse of a yarn. It's a blend of, what is it? It's merino, merino and, and acrylic. acrylic. Yes. Yeah. And nylon. There's a little bit of nylon in there too. So that means that you can wash it. Oh yeah, it's totally washable because the main fiber is acrylic. It's like 52%. Yeah. Yeah. And it, with that nylon in there too, it gives it strength and durability. So oh, yeah. it's a great workhorse yarn for just about any project that you want to do. Yeah, this makes heirloom projects that'll be around for a while. Absolutely. Okay, and it's a worsted weight, which is a number four that you'll see. And then for me, I'm using a US size seven knitting needle and I like to use a circular needle, but you can use a flat needle or I mean a flat knit, a- Straight needle. Straight needles. <laughs> You can this use it, right? Right? She's the one that's behind the scenes when I forget what word I need and she fills it in. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I like circular needles. They will come in handy when you're doing the border, so you might want to have those handy. And then, of course, your normal tape measure, tapestry needle, and scissors. Um, that'll get you through. So, are you ready to get started? Yeah, yeah. Hop in. Show me how you make this. Okay. First, I want to go over a little bit of the construction and the design. So we are making blocks. I'm gonna unfold this. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna set this right over here real quick because in it, it's replica of a quilt, and in quilts you make blocks, right? And then you put the blocks together, and you have your quilt. So I knit each of them in blocks, and they are a little on the bias, so they're super stretchy, go in different directions. But there's a white block here, a white block here and a white block here. There's 16 blocks total in this pattern. And you have the four white ones, then you have four that are white with yellow and gold, and then you have, or orange, and then you have four that are the opposite of that. So this one is, is the yellow and the orange, and then this one is the orange and the yellow. See how they're rotated. So they look like they're the same, but they're flip-flop, these two colors. Nice. And then you have the four that are the, like the aqua color and the white. So there's 16 blocks total. We're gonna knit each of those pretty much exactly the same way. The only thing that's gonna be different is we'll do a little color change here and I'll show you how to do that as well. Then we seam them up and add the border. So that is the construction. Here is what the individual block looks like. This is one of the center ones. And you cast on here and then you work decreases this way to the point. Uh -huh. Then you pick up along your cast on and you do the same exact process for the other side. So you're making two triangles and you connect when you add the second triangle. So it keeps all, everything that you're doing is repetitive. It's the same thing over and over and over again for all of the blocks. It makes it great mindless knitting, TV yeah. watching, traveling because it's one square at Autopilot. a time. Yep. Absolutely. So to get started, you cast on 70 stitches and um, grab my yarn here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to cast on a few. Um, I used a long tail cast on. You can really use whatever cast on you want because you're going to be hiding that cast on edge when you pick up the stitches for the other side. So let me get some stitches cast on here and then I'll show you how to do those decreases to make that triangle. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and cast on. I'm doing the long tail cast on. Yeah, it's my favorite cast on. It's it's just easy now once you learn it then it's you go autopilot yeah your muscle memory kicks in and you don't even i mean look at her she's flying through it she's not thinking about it there, she's not going through the steps in her brain her her hands are just casting on it takes practice Oop. but the more you make the more often you do it and i didn't like my tension so i just pulled a few out and i'm going to start back over and 12 i love how you count in fives <laughs> I do three and two and then five. 
so it's three two five three two five three two five. I don't know why. Just in, it's what works in your brain. It does. I have a weird brain. <laughs> You have a Jenny brain. I do. It's all good. But you know what I love? Okay, so quick little short story about my kids is they're in elementary school. Mm -hmm. So Garrett, when he was learning how to count, these little worksheets that they send home now, that's how they're teaching them to count. And I was like, huh, okay, <laughs> I can teach this now. Granted, he was in first grade when that happened, and I felt super smart. <laughs> now he's in second grade, and I'm losing that smartness. <laughs> What is that? Uh, are you smarter than a fifth grader? I'm not smarter than a second grader. <laughs> okay, so I've got my stitches cast on here. Now I'm going to show you when you turn, the first thing you're going to do is purl all the way back because we want to get a good foundation because we're going to be picking up these stitches um, when we make the second half of the triangle. So to purl, just basic purl stitch here. Yeah, that's easy enough. Yep. So I'm going to go ahead and purl all the way across. Then when I flip it around, I'll show you the next step. So the, the inspiration on these, One Big Happy Yarn Company is a sister company to Missouri Star Quilt Company. Um, and this really classic quilt pattern, the Missouri Star, is also their logo. And it's Missouri Star's 15th anniversary in 2023. So we thought it would be fun to sort of do an homage to our sister company and have knit and crochet versions of their logo. So that's where that comes from. And Jenny's uh, Jenny's knit blanket is in like classic Missouri Star Quilt Company colors. Uh, and the crochet version, which you'll see in our other episodes, I've gone with a more muted palette for that. But we have lots of kits at One Big Happy Yarn Company you can choose from. Or you can go through the Barocco Vintage and put together your own palette. Okay, so I have purled back across. Now we're ready to start the decreases. They're so simple. You're going to do this every time, every row. You're decreasing two stitches on the right side of the fabric and on the wrong side, you are decreasing a stitch on each side of your work. So I'm gonna show you that real quick. The first one is called an SKP, and that means slip, knit, pass. So I'm slipping my first stitch, I'm knitting the second stitch, and then I am passing that slip stitch up and over, and that's a decrease of one. Now I'm gonna go ahead and knit all the way across till I get to the last two stitches, and then I'll show you the next decrease. So let me ask you why you choose that left-leaning decrease over something like a slip-slip knit. Okay, so I chose that particular decrease because I like the edge that it gives me on the side because um, it'll give a little braided look on the side. Which is important like, when we come back for yeah, seaming. Yeah, it'll give you this and this on the side. And when you come back to seam your blocks together, it's very easy to find your edges and ah. make it nice and pretty. So it's almost like when you're slipping a stitch at the beginning of a row, that gives you that nice, solid, easy to see edge when you go to seam it together. Yes, absolutely. Nice. Okay, so I'm almost to the end of the row here. Now I'm ready for the last decrease on this row and it's knit two together. So I'm gonna slide my needle through those two stitches and knit them together. And that also gives me that nice edge right there. Nice. Now I'm turning my work over and on here, we're gonna do a decrease here and a decrease over here. So and every single row. Every single row, you're decreasing right out the gate. This one is a knit two together, or a purl two together. <laughs> so to purl two together, yeah, just pretend those two stitches are one. Yep, purl them together. Then you purl all the way across to the last two stitches and you do that same thing, a purl two together. So nothing fancy on the purl side, nope. just purl two together on both sides. Yep. Okay. I did try a, diff a couple of other different decreases, a purl side decreases, and after looking at all of them, there wasn't much of a difference in the way they looked, so I just stuck with the easy one. Yeah. I'm like, let's just do the same thing on both sides, keep it simple. And we'll go ahead, and that's all you do. Back and forth, you do those same decreases over and over until you get to the end. As you go along, it decreases along. You have less and less stitches. Then when you get up here, you just have um, your two stitches, and you do the, the uh, SKP, which is the slip knit purl that I showed you, or slip knit pass that I showed you, and then cut your yarn and slide it through the last loop, and you're, you're done with your triangle. Okay, so then you come along your cast on edge and you pick up and you do the same decreases all over again. 
I want to show you how, what it looks like when you're picking up those stitches. I have a little <laughs> tiny, tiny sample here. I know. But I'm like, you guys don't want to see me pick it up 35 stitches? Listen, when we do the crochet version, I have teeny tiny samples too. <gasps> Yay! I don't feel so bad. So here is your cast on edge. So now you need to pick up all these stitches. And it looks a little confusing on this corner here. The cast on I used was a long tail cast on and I started out with a slip knot. So the very first stitch over here is through a slip knot okay. and it doesn't have much give because I know in crochet you do your slip knot so that your tail adjusts. adjusts. Yeah, yeah. I don't for some reason. Mine always turns up backwards. So that first loop or stitch is very tight. And so when I get started and I put my needle through that first loop, I know just this first one, I'm going to have a little tiny bit of a struggle or tightness. So I just barely put it in there. And then um, I take the new color of yarn that I'm going to be using. I got all my little tails down here. And make a loop, slide it over, and then pop it right through. So that's my first. Then what I'm doing is I'm looking between the stitches. So... There's two, because this is a, I did the long tail cast on, so I'm not getting exact Vs. They're a little kind of wonky. So I look between the bars and mm -hmm. I go under so that I've got two stitches above and wrap my yarn around. And this is what's called pick up and knit. So I'm going through this little gap right here. I've got my two stitches over there wrap my yarn, and bring it through. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go all the way across. I'm going to pick up all the stitches. The pattern will tell you how many there are, but you pick up all of them. And then you go back and you do the same thing that you did on the last block. You purl back across, then you start your decreases. Easy peasy. I'm going to show you the two colors. This is this one right here. So we have orange and yellow, and then the other one is yellow and orange. So it's the same process, except for you just start with a different color. Slide in through here. You do half of the stitches with the yellow. And there is a diagram in the pattern that will tell you um, which block, which color I used for which block, because we have other kits in other colors. So uh, don't be specific of this has to be the yellow, because depending on which kit you purchase, and you can also change your colors around however you want. Yeah. I mean, you could purchase this kit with these five colors, and you could change your colors around. Absolutely. Yep. So then I just pick up half my stitches with one color. And we're just cruising along here. It really does go quick. I mean, I like projects that are sort of assembly line. So if I was knitting this blanket, I would do all of the, I would do the four white blocks. I would do all of the white triangles first and those set those aside and then come back and pick up and do all the blue pick up and do all the yellow orange then pick up and do all the orange yellow so what i did is i made all triangles i made all the white triangles first and then i sorted them out okay four of these need to have another white side four of them need to have the aqua side four of them need to have the orange and yellow and then four of them need to have the yellow and orange so i did all the triangles first and i had like a ton of all these triangles hanging out and, um, and then I also blocked as I went along. Mm -hmm. I did a little wet blocking because they will kind of curl a little because of just the nature. Oh, it's yeah. all stockinette and stockinette curls. So to get a better look of what I was doing, I would wet block a little bit so I could see it lay flat and see what I was doing. And because these are worked on the bias and it's the same thing with the crochet squares, they tend to look more like diamonds when they're right off the needle or the hook, but they do actually square out when you block them. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so now I'm adding in the orange, and I just add it in and continue going. <laughs> just drop that yellow like it's hot and move forward with a new color. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. That's so easy. Sometimes sometimes the techniques look so technic technical and complicated in the finished blanket, but it's really just as easy as... Picking it, dropping one and picking up the other. Yeah. Okay, so the trick for the yellow and orange is going to be on the I'll show you on the pearl side and you have to remember to do this every time oh and your last one on the side is going to be under that little bead right there yeah that's where you'll pick up that last stitch 
and it feels like you're kind of going down the side of the triangle that like you already that. made, but you're really not, and it pulls it up to square that corner by going behind that little bead that you'll have there. Okay, so now I'm turning over, and I like to leave long tails. I mean, these are, for me, kind of super long. I like to leave the long tails as I'm going along because um, it's just, easier to manage when you have these tails. And then at the end, when you go to weave in, you've got lots of extra room to weave in and then you can clip them down when you're done. Yep. Okay, so now I'm on the uh, row two, which is simply purl. We're not doing a decrease just yet. I know what you're gonna get to in the middle. So this, the working two colors in the same section where they always like meet in the same spot. Well, not necessarily, but it's intarsia. Mm -hmm. And if you just knit with the colors in their sections, they won't connect in the middle and you'll have two separate pieces. Exactly. So when you get to the last one, and this is gonna be a little loose because you have your tail, but that's okay. You go ahead and just purl into it and then you can tug your little tail there. And now I'm going to my yellow. And I've heard the adage, old over new. And I do it every time, old over new. So I'm taking my orange and I'm kind of just laying it this way. That's your old color. That's my old color. The new color I'm gonna start uh, purling with is the yellow. So I'm bringing it up and then just knit into this stitch right here, or purl into this stitch right here. And away we go. And what that's doing is it's twisting those two colors together and closing up any gaps that you may get. Right. So if you didn't do that twist, then those two sections are not connected. But when you do that twist, that keeps those two sections connected. Um, I'll just bring it in while Jenny's knitting. So you can see that those stitches sit nice next to each other. Yep. And they stay part of the same fabric instead of two separate sections. Now that's what it looks like on the, the back side of the work, on the wrong side of the work. On the front side of the work, your um, yarn is gonna be in the back and you just twist it in the back and keep everything on the back side of your work, all of your twists. So it, um, it's gonna seem so natural when you get there. Yeah, you're gonna do a lot of it in this project, so you'll have a lot of practice. <laughs> exactly. Here is um, the right side. So I'm gonna do my decrease on this corner here, which is slip and knit. We've already showed you that, and then pass that over. And then I'm gonna knit to the center here. And then do that twist one. And more then time. do that yeah. twist, yeah. Mm -hmm. Every row. Every time. And always remember old over new. So my yellow this time is going over here. My orange is coming up behind. Make sure that's behind your needle. And now as I knit into here, these two twist. And then I just continue on. So that's how you work the color change in the center of this triangle. Um, you do, like I said, you're gonna do yellow and orange four times and orange and yellow four times. And then that'll give you your 16 blocks. And then um, in, I guess in episode two, we'll show you how to seam them up and add the border. Yeah. So this is how you get started on the Missouri Star Knit Blanket. You can get the kits at onebighappy.com. It has the pattern and all the yarn that you need. That's and cool. we also have the crochet version there too. Yep. And you can also check out Sarah's video for the crochet. Yep. And were they are releasing on the same day? Yeah, so you can, so, so this is another one of those projects where you're a knitter, your friends are crocheter, but you can both work on the same project. So episodes one of the knit and crochet blankets release at the same time, episodes two release at the same time. Awesome. So join us for this make along. Thank you so much. Happy, Happy knitting. knitting.